Hey, Fred, hope you're doing well. Legendary, as my, as my guy Quan would say. <laughs> hey, um, what happened for you to end up on the reserve COVID list? And can you tell us about your experience during those eight days? Yeah. Um, I mean, you guys obviously know I either, you know, had it or was around somebody that had it, but, um, you know, I don't really want to get into the, the, the nitty gritty and the details behind it, but, um, it, it, it sucked. It did it being away from the team for 10 days. Um, you know, it, it's hard knowing that, that you possibly like letting the team down, you know, everybody misses you and missing all that time. But uh, at the same time, I'm just grateful that it happened when it did and not during the season. Um, you know, being back at the time that I'm, that I am able to get going for week one, that's a blessing. But um, yeah, it, it wasn't, uh, wasn't a fun process. Hey Fred, uh, Richard Sherman, obviously a guy, we always ask you guys, what is it like to learn from Richard Sherman? He was, he was in here earlier talking about how he learns from you guys, his younger teammates and how he's constantly trying to do it. I'm curious just how you've seen that from him, uh, the way he interacts in the locker room, the way he interacts with you even, and his kind of ongoing mission to always add things to his game. Yeah, I mean, Sherm, he's always learning, like you said. Um, I've, I've learned so much from him in such a short time, just as, you know, being a leader and uh, obviously football knowledge, being able to anticipate different things that the offense is trying to, to do to, to attack our defense. But, um, you know, I can't say enough good things about Sherm. He's um, the ultimate professional, and obviously he's going into, what, year 10, I think, year 10 and the fact that he's still trying to learn and still gain knowledge not not from guys older than him but from younger guys uh you know that just shows the humility so um you know that's that's my guy sure Fred last year the Cardinals picked up Kenyon Drake right before you guys are going to play him he kind of took the game by storm how much value is there in being able to watch the rest of the season where he's been playing with them and help you kind of game plan and prepare for what you're going to see on Sunday? Yeah, it's, it's really important um, because he is such a big part of their offense. Uh, he's very dynamic. Uh, he's, he's a very good runner, um, you know, and he does a lot for their offense. And so it is important for us to have that, that film, I guess you could say, and an experience going against him in the last two games. Uh, their whole offense is, is very explosive and dynamic, so we're, we're going to have a lot on our hands. you backing off a question about the, the running game. Just what are the challenges from, from a linebacker's perspective in, in going against a team that still runs the ball effectively but likes to do it out of um, smaller personnel sets with, you know, three and four receivers as often as they do? Yeah, I think their offense as a whole in general just creates, uh, you know, some – some different things in terms of what we have to, what we don't see a lot of zone read and the the type of player that Kyler Murray is. It, I guess the only person I could really compare him to is Lamar Jackson. Like just the fact that he can do so much with with his legs uh, and throwing the ball downfield. So I mean, including Kyler in the run game on top of having uh, Drake as the running back, it presents a lot of uh, you know different things that we need to make sure we're covering all our bases um, as a linebacker, just being disciplined and uh, with the with your eyes and making sure we're taking the right angles in terms of tracking and, and tackling the ball carrier. Hi, right, Fred. Um, a couple, a couple things. I know you don't want to get in the nitty gritty of whatever went through last week, but did you, do you have to regain some physical strength or stamina this week? And then also, um, well, what does it mean to be a team captain uh, like your young brother, Troy? Yeah. Um, yeah, the first part of the question, I, I feel like I'm actually – I feel great. Um, you know, I think that's a credit to training with the performance staff out here for uh, right before camp started, um, having that base underneath me. So when I did come back, I was ready to go. So I feel great out there. Um, and being a captain, man, that's – I think that's that's uh, the biggest achievement I've I've accomplished to to this date. Um, you know, it says so much when your peers respect you, and it's just an honor for me to be able to serve them. Uh, that's that's all I want to do is make sure I'm I have their backs and whatever they need, I, they can count on me. Uh, and like you mentioned, my my little brother uh, being captain for for BYU, that's that's pretty cool too. Hey, Fred, I don't know how much you saw him in college, but Isaiah Simmons is kind of like you, I guess more of a modern-day type NFL linebacker. 
Um, if you do have any sort of scouting report, um, what is it on Isaiah Simmons? Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I haven't seen too much of him. Just like you know, what things that they were showing maybe back when the combine was going on. But um, you know, he's a long, rangy guy, really fast. I think he ran in the four threes, which was uh, you know insane at his size. But um, I, I think he did a lot uh, for them at Clemson at a bunch of different positions. So, you know, I'm sure they're going to use them in, in a lot of different ways. Um, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll have to see when game day comes. Hey, Fred, I know you guys are focused on week one in the Arizona Cardinals, but in a broader sense, the NFL season's less than, what, two hours away from kicking off. So right now everybody's throwing out their picks. Uh, do you guys still feel like you're the team to beat in the NFC? Do you even talk about something like that? Uh, do, do we feel like what? I'm sorry. You're, you're still the team to beat in the NFC. Um, yeah, I don't think that's, that's really talked about much. Uh, we're not, we're not focused on, you know, I guess the, the big picture. We're, we're worried about the 49ers uh, in this building. We're worried about taking it one day at a time and, and getting 1% better in all areas. Um, you know, I think as long as we're focused on, on what we can do to, to become better from last year, that's, that'll take us where we want to go. Fred, with everything that's gone on in the offseason and what you've uh, dealt with personally, does this week one feel any differently mentally than they have in the past? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. I mean, obviously there's, I think, not only football, but in life there's always adversity. Um, uh, this one obviously was very unique, but I've kind of used it at, to my advantage. Um, and saying that, you know, I'm just going to come out of it stronger. And I think my teammates have rallied around me, me be coming back, uh, you know, obviously having 10 days off, I guess you could say that I have fresh legs. That's That's been the joke around the building. But, um, you know, I'm ready to go. I, I'm mentally, physically, everything is, is where it needs to be. And so I don't think it's too much too much of a difference. Do two more for Fred. Fred, also in preparing for Kenyon, obviously you're pl uh, preparing for Kyler Murray. Nick Bosa said that you guys know more about what he does, his habits, what he can do on the field. How are you guys more prepared this season for him? Um, I think just having those uh, those two games last year uh, under our belt, seeing it uh, last year. I mean, they they gave us fits. It was it was uh, it was close games down to the wire on each of those games. Very competitive team, and I know they've only gotten better in the off season, adding some pieces. So, uh, I think you know what's helped us is knowing kind of how they how they run their offense from last season. But I mean, obviously, they're still going to present a lot of issues for us, and probably you know going to come out and, and try some new things. But we just got to be ready. Hey, Fred, just knowing the Cardinals are going to spread you guys out with ten personnel, and sometimes even going empty. Can you just talk about how important it is for the back seven to? to tackle in the open field. And I wonder, I was just wondering if there's been any emphasis on just gang tackling this week. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, you mentioned it. They're, they're going to they're gonna use their, uh, as much space as they can, uh, get us into open space to try and make tackles. And it's going to take all 11. You know, I, I, I joke around with the guys that we have to have our track spikes on this week, uh, getting ready to run to the football, all 11 to the, to the ball, um, you know, to make sure that we're getting guys down.